Hi, I'm Rob McClure. And I'm Will Jace. <laughs> and you're watching Broadway.com's Ask, Ask a Star. How we did that pretty well. Why are you here? Uh, because. But, um, see see what he did? Here? What a douche. <laughs> Nugget. We're here from Broadway's Something Rotten. Um, it's so also I, hard when you have a hinge on your yeah, face. Yeah, they're dreaming of being on Broadway with a hinge in their face. <laughs> um, yeah, sometimes the That's layout beautiful. doesn't really work out for you. What's the weirdest thing you learned about Tony Danza during Honeymoon in Vegas that you can say on Broadway.com? Oh. That was my caveat. But. Okay, Tony Danza tells the best story I've ever heard, and okay. I'm going to tell Tony Danza's <laughs> okay. story. He said that his dad asked him to come back to Brooklyn during Who's the Boss? And he was like, listen, I can't go all the way down to Brooklyn. Who's the boss? Is it big? I can't go home to Brooklyn. His dad was like, cut the baloney, come down to Brooklyn, come visit. So he goes. And he's like, listen, listen, we're gonna paint the guest room. Go get some paint. And he was like, Dad, I can't just walk down the street and buy paint. Like, I'm, it's a big deal now. And he's like, listen, <laughs> cut the baloney, go with your friend, cut and walk, well, yeah, walk down it. the street with your, with your buddy and go get some paint. So Tony's like, all right, it's gonna be crazy. So he walks out, it's a beautiful spring day. He's walking down the street and he said, no one was recognizing him. No one. So him and his friend, he's eventually like trying to make eye contact with people. Hey, like, don't, I don't. Hey, don't. <laughs> like, so, and nobody. So he walks into the paint store and there are two teenagers in front of him in line and he's like, they're gonna know who I am. So he's like looking and looking and looking and finally the girl turns around and he's like, hey. And she goes, and he's like, and he's, he goes, I found myself saying something I thought I'd never say. Don't you know who I am? <laughs> And he said the kid turned around and said, of course, but your dad told everyone not to talk no! to you. No! <laughs> oh, Tony Danza's dad. That is funny. Isn't that awesome? That's Tony Danza's brilliant. father told all of Brooklyn to leave Tony alone. No, really. Walk around the street, the Tony. <laughs> I'm going to do it to you someday. That's humbling. In A lesson in humility from Tony Danza's mm -hmm. dad. Do you hate someone you currently work with? No. Hate? No. <laughs> so, who? Leslie Kritzer. I just That's hate her. Is this your first Broadway show? Okay. My first Broadway show ever was on a school trip in sixth grade. It was at this theater, and I sat in mezzanine D8, one, two, three, four rows up, one, two, three, four rows in to see Cats. And I thought at that time that being on Broadway was the most ridiculous, <laughs> un unfathomable pipe dream that would never, ever in a million years happen to me. And I just opened a Broadway show in the spot where I was thinking that. We live in a world now where no job is safe. You can get screwed over by any job. So why not go after the one that makes you happy? Amen. Cool. What aspect of the Renaissance are you glad you don't have to deal with today? Yeah, oh, Claire. good question. That is. Um, plumbing and the lack thereof. Um, that, you know, you'd be walking through piles of dookie in the street. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Even if you are all walking around making art, mm. you smell while you're doing it. That's the part I don't want. Okay. The enlightenment I'll take. The lack the of poopy. The lack of, of, of toilet cleanliness. Yeah, yeah. I'll go without. All right. Thank God we've got the diffusion off the Kinos. Psst, I know what that means. <laughs> and here first, hey! Oh, I even got a vocal run. Both of them. Yeah, hey. while she's growing her while own vegetables in her garden, in her dressing room. She makes her own salad. She to, makes yes, her own salad. salad. I do. You I make guess. your own from salad because from yes. the vegetables you've grown. In her yes. dressing, she doesn't leave her dressing room during the break because she made her food. Raiden, I have a problem being in my head while I sing. How do I let that go? Chill out, there are people dying. Time's up! <laughs> Chill out, people are dying! Perfect, you nailed it. Yeah. Love that. How many questions was that? You got 10. Yeah! Ten. I'll take it. It was Honeymoon in Vegas, and it was just like a week or two ago where I came out and I was about to do the opening number, um, and there's a bell tone, and I enter with my back to the audience, and I turn around with the bell tone, and Stephen Sondheim was in the fifth row. Oh, spotted him. And I didn't know that he was going to be there. No one told us, thanks. 
Um, Blue slip sink ships, friends. Yeah, and I'm sure people like uh, on the subway and people in your the family. It's explanation of the show. Right. What are you it's doing, Mrs. Delphire? Oh! <laughs> like there's no, like it's about a thing. Of, no, they know. Right, they know what thing it's about. Yeah, yeah. they get it. People. I said, I cannot go back to before. The most embarrassing moment you had on stage. I was doing the Avenue Q tour. Yes. And I walked out and I was like, hey, Kate Monster. And Kelly Sawyer goes, hi, Princeton. Nosebleed that is down her face, down her neck, just onto her shirt. She knew she had a nosebleed, but she didn't know how bad until I was like, hi, Kate Monster. <laughs> and I like just stopped talking. And she is like, my nose is bleeding, I have to stop. <laughs> she walks off the stage, and I with Princeton, I'm like, we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. What is all around you? Um, this, is, uh, my, th this is a room in my house we jokingly call Theater Applebee's, and it's just where we put all the stuff that you go, one day I'll have a room for that. This is the room for that. The rest of our house looks like grown up land, but this is not grown up land. <laughs> if ever, if ever I want to bring this to the people, North between all the regionalisms. They're very specific they're accents. Very in the specific, show. Yeah. and and uh, you know I think people you know we emailed Jeremy Heron before we even began, and everyone said like where do you want him from, um, yeah. and uh, and what's funny is his first instinct on Tim was like what do we think about Yorkshire for Tim, which is the hardest. It's so one. hard. It's the hardest. It's so one. hard. So I'm at home, reading a line like we've only been on the road for a month. And it's like, being on the road for a month. I can't like, do it. what is that? Being on I the road do. for a month? No one will know what the hell I'm saying. So I'm like working on all this stuff. So I get to rehearsal yeah. and I start doing that. And Jeremy's like, it's great, but no one's going to know what you're saying. No one will understand. <laughs> so we, we sort of shifted it to sort of a Southeast London sort of, uh, sort of thing. And now people know what I'm saying, but you still get the sort of class. Uh, differentiation between him and the rest of them. My role is cake. Oh my, but I can't hit those. Words. Words. There's a will, there's a word. You don't want to hear that. <laughs> you, no one wants to hear that from a baritone. We got to get into your phone. Okay. We're going to prank call one of your celebrity friends. Okay. As the celebrity of your choice. You want to try Norm Lewis? Norm Lewis! Let's try Norm Lewis. Okay, do you know what your prank's going to be? Uh, and sure, who... I'll be Nathan Lane okay. asking Here we you go. to do a new play. Norm Lewis, listen, this is Nathan Lane. I was wondering if you're still doing Phantom of the Opera. I'd like to put in a, a house seat order. I, I'd like to come with four of my friends. We're gonna go out afterwards. You should join. Let your soul take you where you long to be, Norm Lewis. Bye. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you. I was at Angus McIndo. Is that how you say that? I think so. McIndo. McIndo. McIndo, yeah. Um, this is 2002, and I was at dinner with my friend, and my friend said, hey, do your Nathan Lane impression. So I went, what do you want me to do, dress in drag and do the hula? And I hear behind me at the bar, are you doing me? It's good. And he went back to his drink. You What's your Broadway debut, Rob? My Broadway debut was the 2002 revival of a play called I'm Not Rappaport with John uh, Hirsch and Ben Vereen. Oh yeah, no big deal. And I was working in the Paper Mill Playhouse box office. So the Paper Mill asked me if I want to understudy the part. And I said, I'm making $600 a week in the box <laughs> office. Can I keep my box office job and understudy the show? I'll be in the building. If you need me, just call my phone extension and I'll come put on the costume. And they Amazing. let me. So I was understudying from the box office. And then two weeks in, they decided that the show was going to Broadway and they were bringing everyone. So what was that first night like for you? I lost my damn mind. I bought a journal that night. And I had a dressing room on Schubert Alley that I could like sit on and I was looking at Schubert Alley <laughs> and I wrote on the first page of that journal I made it and then I didn't work again for four years <laughs> You also have a Vespa right around Philly. Vespa, on a Vespa? Is, yeah, because it's free to park at the train station huh. until they see this and then start charging <laughs> But it's uh, no, it's 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 a great way to get around the city I feel like I'm on a motorcycle <laughs> and then I see a picture of me on it and go you're not on a motorcycle, <laughs> but, but it feels cool. I was doing Alex Brightman's version of the voice. It's kind of this awesome, like, goes up and then goes down. Bottom of your resume, name some of your special skills. Okay, um, um, tightrope walking, lasso spinning, uh, juggling, velociraptor impression. Hit me with those special skills, son. Okay, velociraptor painting. <laughs> Okay.
And then McClure, you've done this show for so effing long, you should know everybody's part. Okay. So, you gotta go after the things you want while you're still in your prime. Hit it. There's a fine, fine line between love and and a waste of your time. But I do da 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 do da da intermission. <laughs> Very impressive. The only bad one was Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> and he walks in and bum da bum to the Shakespeare. He's oh, I gotta warm up. Rob, do yours. Wait, Rob. Do your do your warm up, Rob. What? Do your warm up. Do your warm up, Which Rob. One? Bye, bye, boom! What happened? Oh my god. <laughs> That hurt me to hear that. Barbara! Hey! hey. <laughs> Gotta think down. <laughs> Do it. Uh. Barbara, I'm home! Uh. That's it. Oh. What I know now! No, you turn the camera around when I finally okay, got it. Okay, do it. They'll be able to hear it, though. <laughs> Your Nathan Lane impression is so good! This is great! Oh, sorry. Uh, I didn't write this, but his Nathan Lane impression is so good. What other impersonations can you do, and will you give us a taste? Oh, well, God. Well, first, do you do others? What other impressions? So do Nathan. Okay, no, uh, this is an opportunity. Well, listen, I appreciate the love about Nathan, but I'm going to try and do some others to broaden my horizons. I have said that our show needs to be done with the Muppets. Oh, perfect. And I've cast it in my head. It's perfect. Nick is Kermit, B is Piggy, Nigel is Gonzo, which makes Portia a chicken, which makes her dad <laughs> Sam Eagle, oh, which is great. perfect. Where's Fozzie fit in this? Um, Fozzie's Nostradamus. Oh, right. Rolf is the minstrel. Rolf the dog is the minstrel. Uh, uh, Lord Clapham and uh, uh, Shylock, or Stadler and Waldorf. Oh, like, great. it's so perfect. So, great. I caught myself in the street the other day. Singing like, open. okay, the show would open and Rolf would be sitting there with a the piano. War of the Roses, Chaucer's Tale, a brutal few. And then I was walking down 8th Avenue to Penn Station the other day, and I was Which thinking- Which fits right in, and doesn't I, matter, nobody looks at you. And I was thinking about Sam Eagle going like, good God, y'all, and a bunch of chickens going, bark, 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 bark. So impressions are a huge embarrassing part of my existence. <laughs> That's what we just learned. Embarrassing, say it like Nathan. It's so embarrassing! <laughs> but thank you. Oh, it makes me happy. If it's anything like the Beetlejuice version of the afterlife, it's finding Leslie Kritzer and asking her to sing. I'm doing the thing that I so hoped I would do. When you look ahead 30, 40 years, can you ever do that? Can you ever yeah. think that way and think yes. about what you would want career-wise? Yeah. Uh, here's what I act, the game I actually play. <laughs> Is Maggie and I pretend that we're like grandparents to uh -huh. say these kids. Those kids see us as like senile old <laughs> actors who had, and we always tell these stories of like, your grandmother and I uh, toured the country in a Tony winning puppet sex show. And it's like, Grandpa's talking about the puppet sex show again. <laughs> no, he did. Your mother, your grandmother played Lucy the Slut <laughs> in a Tony award winning puppet. Grandpa, please. My friends are coming over and Grandpa's gonna talk about the puppet sex show again. Like, that's where I see myself in 40 years. <laughs> I, did, I, I dressed up as Euphor Denai Dauphi, an elderly Scottish woman, eight times a week on the Broadway, Grandpa. <laughs> no, you didn't, Grandpa. Yes, I did. Go to Lincoln Center. There's a video. <laughs> they wouldn't believe me. But I can't wait what to meet life. that crazy old guy. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. I, I so want to be a character actor who, they, who comes in, knocks some batty old character out of the park. I look forward to it. <laughs> May I be so lucky. You are kind of well known for your pre-show rituals. Tell us about what you do before shows. Um, I run the seats to get my diaphragmatic breathing going uh, for my singing. Kazoon tight. And it's a great warm up for your show and yeah. it gets you in the zone. Yep, and it, and it connects me to the room. I yeah. love that. Yeah. All right, I'll let you go. A13, Okay. get out of my way. They leave it kind of roomy at the Winter Garden. D, 2468. This was the seat that I sat in 23 years ago to see Cats, my first Broadway show. Right here. Dreams come true. Dreams come true! It couldn't be more perfect. It's crazy. And so the first time I ran the seats, I got up here and I was like, oh, this is where five, I sat. Five, and then I had this like sweet idea. I thought, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave a note 
to whoever's in D8, just saying like, hey, I don't know who you are or what you dream of. What I was dreaming of when I sat here 23 years ago is as far-fetched as whatever you might be dreaming of. And that's the thing, you know, it might be your 400th performance of something, but there's a family of five who've been listening to the cast album in Iowa, and uh, they've never seen it before. Right. So it doesn't matter if it's your 400th time, because it's be your 400th performance of something. But there's a family of five who've been listening to the cast album in Iowa, and uh, they've never seen it before. Right. So it doesn't matter if it's your 400th time, because it's been this huge event for this these people who, you know, so what number show is this for you? So tonight will be my 2,283rd or fourth. <laughs> okay, so we like one room at a time did it. We tore out the old lath plaster and sheetrocked and it took like 10 years room by room and we finished it like when you guys knocked on the door to come see the house. <laughs> <laughs> Haley, what's in your dream omelet? My dream omelet. See, now that's that's like your, not your favorite omelet. My dream omelet. Oh, okay. So it makes me think like, like it's people. Gonna, in yeah, it. it's gonna be like something strange. Yeah, people, because I, because it's a Sweeney omelet. Mm. See what I did? Who would you? Sweeney I'm gonna go on Haley's. Omelet. Who would you put in? Who would I put in, in a Sweeney my omelet? omelet? Okay, sorry, Haley. Okay, uh, Ray Fines. Because I'd want to like, like he did in uh, Red Dragon, where these he are like people eats. you hate. No, I would want oh, okay. to like take their power. Okay. So like I'd want Ray Fiennes in my omelet. I would want Benedict Cumberbatch in oh, my omelet. Oh gosh. Um, and I would want maybe a friend, <laughs> a guy <laughs> um, that you admire. I, um, let's see. Um, oh, oh, uh, um, Christian Borle. Okay, if it wasn't, what, <laughs> see what I did? Let's, let's count him sort of coaching let's count me. Let's count him out since we're not talking about Christian. Uh, right let's now. Who see who um, slide to unlock. <laughs> Who's playing 50 games?